This video is about how gluten intolerance sets the stage for and sheds light on other food reactions because gluten is just the tip of the iceberg. Everything we know about inflammatory food reactions we learned from gluten intolerance and celiac disease. This is episode four in my series, Essentials of Inflammation. There is a ton of research on gluten intolerance and celiac disease. It's the most well-known food reaction on earth, and it can tell us exactly what can and does happen when our immune system is triggered by a food. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wangen, the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center, and I've been diagnosing celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivities for over 25 years, and I'd like to share with you what I've learned. Just to whet your appetite, celiac disease has been shown to be associated with well over 100 different health problems. We'll get into uh, more about those soon, but first let's talk about what celiac disease and gluten are because many of you, many of you probably don't know when that's perfectly fine. Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition that is triggered by eating gluten. Autoimmune means that your immune system is attacking you. And gluten is a protein that's found in wheat and several other related grains. Now celiac disease is more specifically damage to the small intestine that is caused by your own immune system. And that reaction is triggered by e eating gluten, which then stimulates your immune system to generate an inflammatory response that results in your immune system attacking your small intestine. I know it's a lot, but if you need to, go, go listen to it again. Um, but that's really critical because it's been assumed that people with celiac disease always have diarrhea and digestive problems because it's this thing that always attacks the small intestine. But despite all this popular belief, and even doctors have believed this, lots of research has clearly shown that celiac disease may or may not result in digestive problems. The only common thread in celiac disease is that there is damage to the small intestine. Now, fortunately, regardless of the symptoms or the severity of the symptoms, when the person stops eating gluten, most people heal up and get better. It's the only autoimmune disease that we already know how to cure. However, people who have it but don't get diagnosed or who are diagnosed but don't stop eating gluten are known to be at much higher risk for a lot of other health problems. Here's a quick but fairly thorough list of those problems just to give you an idea. So why do all these things happen? Now, if you've watched my previous three episodes on the series on inflammation, you now know why, because inflammation is at the root of nearly all disease. And if you continuously stimulate the immune system to generate inflammation, then you are at risk for poor health. And we shouldn't be too surprised by this, but it seems to be something that no one wants to talk about. So how does this connect with other food reactions? Celiac disease is not really the cause, it's the symptom. So what did I just say? So celiac disease is a symptom of gluten intolerance. Everyone who has celiac disease first had an immune response to gluten, the food. That immune response to gluten is measurable with lab tests. However, that immune response does not always result in celiac disease, which is the autoimmune condition in the small intestine. So gluten reactions can result in all kinds of different symptoms. One of them is celiac disease. And in fact, even if you have celiac disease, that's widely variable, the kinds of symptoms that you can and do get when you have celiac disease. Because people often wrongly assume or they're told that celiac disease, for example, is worse than other forms of gluten sensitivity. However, research again has shown that that's not the case. About half of all celiacs don't even have any symptoms. So they don't have symptoms at all not any that they notice. So only the positive test for celiac disease is the only thing they have, right? They get a positive test for celiac disease, 
but they don't have anything else that they feel. That's because celiac disease is only one of many problems that can result from a gluten intolerance. And it is a symptom of gluten intolerance, not the cause. So I've seen many examples of this in my practice. So for example, so I've had numerous patients who've been in or out of the hospital for severe pain. So bad that literally they're in the hospital because they can't function or you know they can't get out of bed. They just can't do anything or they're just so afraid of their health because they're in so much pain. And they go to the hospital and guess what? They tested negative for celiac disease and they were sent home. They didn't get any answers. Now what we later found out was that they were gluten intolerant and that when they cut gluten out of their diet, they got all better. So those people are just as bad off as a lot of people who are celiac. Now lots of people who react to gluten don't have celiac disease. This is important because less than 1% of the population has celiac disease, but somewhere around 10% of the population is gluten intolerant. That's why so many people who don't have celiac disease find that they feel so much better when they cut out gluten. It, it's a lot more valuable doing that than just treating the symptoms with an anti-inflammatory, right? And then trying to block the inflammation when you can absolutely remove the trigger of the inflammation. Now reacting to gluten can and does result in all kinds of other problems instead of or in addition to celiac disease. Now celiac disease is only one of many possible problems of a gluten intolerance and these problems are often called gluten sensitivity or non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And a lot of scientific research has clearly shown that if you have a gluten intolerance or gluten sensitivity, then your risk of developing other problems goes way up. Now what problems are those? So here's a short list. Fatigue, anxiety, headaches, which include migraines, dermatitis, muscle aches, brain fog, heart disease, thyroid problems, cancers, dementia, dizziness, gallbladder problems, infertility and miscarriages, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, anemia, liver failure, and there are several other autoimmune diseases other than celiac disease. And what do all of these conditions have in common? Inflammation. Inflammation is at the root of all of them. So remember, the immune system creates inflammation, not the food. Gluten is not the problem. Lots of people eat gluten and are just fine. That's why so many people think that avoiding gluten is a fad. Because for them, it doesn't change anything, but it's not a fad. And around 30 million people in the US are gluten sensitive and do better or would feel better avoiding gluten. And I don't mean a little better. I mean it would completely change their lives, or it already has because they've cut out gluten. Now here's the kicker. This video is about how gluten intolerance sets the stage for and sheds light on other food reactions because gluten is just the tip of the iceberg. It's the popular food reaction, the one that has everybody's attention and that people have heard about by now, right? But any food has the potential to trigger your immune system to generate inflammation in the same way the gluten can. Now, if you like this video and you wanna be notified about future videos, click on subscribe below. Or if you wanna take it to the next step and would like to be a patient, visit my website at ibstreatmentcenter.com. In my next video in this series, I'll talk about how we can tell when foods are triggering our immune system to create inflammation. I look forward to seeing you there.